Alright guys, well, I don't really do these types of videos, but um, it's my fucking YouTube channel, so if I want to pivot into this type of content, I'll bloody well do it. Today, I want to discuss why I decided to buy $30,000 of Ambrosius this morning on Binance. US dollars as well, so not, not even those toy chip Aussie dollars. The 30k bones on your boy Ambrosius here, alright? And I kind of want to talk through the logic and explain why I did it. I'm not saying you should do this. This isn't financial advice. I'm not saying you should go out and do this, but I'm going to explain why I did it. And maybe in fucking three months, six months, a year, I'll look back on this video and be like, holy shit, you're a fucking idiot for that investment. No wonder you lost a lot of money. Or maybe I'll look back on it and be like, you're a fucking genius. This was a really smart idea. I'm hoping it's the latter, but it could be the former. You know, I, I, I don't know which way it's going to go. So the first thing that I want to mention about Ambrosius is that this crypto has been around for a very long time, okay? Um, it was one of the OGs on Binance. It, it, it's done the rounds. It's established in at least some sense, okay? Now, out of all the tokens that are on Binance, it has one of the lowest market caps. So if I bring up the Ambrosius coin market cap here, you can see that it's basically at full supply. Okay, so there's no more tokens that are going to be printed. All right, it's not a, it's, it's not got some insane diluted market cap or whatever. All right, we're at a market cap of 17 million, which in crypto, as I'm sure you guys know, is fucking peanuts. Okay, this is peanuts in the grand scheme of things. Okay, it doesn't take a lot of money to move this market cap up. It really doesn't, because you have to think about it, you know tokens being lost, people dying. Um, I think they have masternode systems set up where people are staking a lot of these tokens as well. So, so realistically, it doesn't take a lot of new money to come into the system here and deliver a pretty powerful punch on the underlying value. You know, this, this thing can double, triple, quadruple 10 times, okay? Now, I'm not saying other tokens can't do that, but the, the chances of Bitcoin 10, time, 10 times in from here you know, that's, it's, it's going to take a lot of work to get there. It takes a lot of fresh money. It takes a lot of news. It takes a lot of confidence. It takes a lot of in institutional investment. With this, you actually just need a few whales to come in. You just need a little bit of hype. You just, need a, you just need a little bit of that kindling. And this thing can two times, three times. And you can two times, three times your investment on this. Okay. Or I should say, I can two times or three times my investment on this. Okay. Because again, I'm not saying you should do this. I'm saying this is why I'm doing it. So there's an extremely low market cap. Okay. Now, I don't want to talk about the fundamentals here necessarily about the project first. What I want to talk about is the um, is the meme side of cryptocurrency. Okay. So what I'm going to do is mention that there are these groups called pump groups. Now, I don't think they're good for crypto. Okay. I think that if you get involved with them, you're probably thinking about things not in quite the right way. You really risk being burnt. Um, it's kind of a zero sum game. And if you're not smart and if you, you hesitate or whatever, you can lose bigly. All right. So I, I'm not, I, I will outright say that I, I'm not interested in pump groups or any of that kind of action, but I would be stupid for not recognizing that they exist and that they influence the field of play and that, you know, a couple of times a week, some tokens go absolutely gangbusters because a pump group decided to come in, push the prices up. Okay. Now, it's pretty hard to move larger tokens, okay? Tokens that have a billion, that have 2 billion market cap, okay? It's difficult to get those 80%, those 200%, those 500% that we've seen sometimes in, in, in the not too recent past, okay? So what these pump groups will do um, is generally look for lower market cap tokens that they can send sky high, right? because there's very little liquidity on the sell side. So there's very little sell pressure and it doesn't take much currency for them to build up all of that buy and then sell at the top and then stagger the sales down and then they just make a heap of money and they just leave the bag for everyone else to enjoy, okay? So what I wanna do is talk about the localized version of this, okay? And there's one group that tomorrow morning in, in about 12 hours is gonna do a pump. Now, 
I don't know if it's going to be Ambrosius. There's a chance that it could be Ambrosius, okay, for a number of reasons, but there's, there's a chance that it could be Ambrosius. And I'm just going to talk you through my logic of how I came to think that it could be Ambrosius, okay? I might be completely wrong here, but it doesn't make a difference because there's heaps of other stuff for me to talk about when it comes to this token and why I fucking put 30 grand on it this morning. All right, so here's one of the groups, okay? It's called Mega Pump Group. It's got 32,000 subscribers. The Discord server has 90,000 subscribers. It's run by this guy called John. Um, he's a bit of a whale. I've seen some of his trades on Discords. He's got fucking 50, 100 Bitcoins trades going on, all right? He is stacked with cash, all right? Now, he mainly does like a pump once a month, okay? These aren't, these aren't weekly things. And the reason why they're not weekly things is because they have to build up the stack, okay? They have to have enough of their own liquidity that as the price goes up, they can stagger the sales, okay? They're not necessarily trying to sell right at the top. What they're trying to do is buy pr pretty low levels and then have the staggered sales as it goes up. And then it's just, they just win. Right, they just there's there's no issue. They just win because everybody else comes in. They they get the FOMO pumping and it just starts raising itself. And then when they feel like it's all it's all been and done, they can just jump, dump the shit coin and and just move on with their day. And they've done fantastic things. Right, these pump groups and the people behind them, right, aren't sitting there and building up this um, cache of coinage a couple of days before the action. Okay. They're doing it for, for, for weeks or even months before this stuff goes on, right? And a token like Ambrosus is a prime candidate for this, a prime candidate, again, because there's low levels of liquidity. There's not that much price volatility, especially what's when it's on the lower end. And so it can be picked up very, very easily. Now, this one group, okay, what I want to point out to is that th th this pump is going to happen in 12 hours. They're using the Bitcoin pairing on Binance. Now this is important because um, the fact that they mention this probably suggests that the token they're going to pump only has the Bitcoin pairing. Now there are lots of very large tokens that have multiple pairings. Okay. So if I go into here and I type in one inch, right, there are two pairings for that. There are Bitcoin and USDT. Now what I should mention is these tokens will basically run at the same pace next to each other, okay? If I go in and buy a um, million dollars of one inch via USDT, there will be some arbitrage robot in the background that goes to the one inch Bitcoin section. It quickly buys up Bitcoin. It sells the Bitcoin for the one inch and it meets the order on the other side in order for me to buy the one inch with the USDT and it skims off the top. So you don't need to mention exactly what pairing it is unless there's only one pairing for your token because the arbitrage robots, they don't care, right? If, if you know, like it, when Bitcoin pumps on any pair, it's pumping on any pair, right? Be it XRP, be it Ethereum, Cardano, whatever, it will pump so you don't need to specify. Now, Ambrosus only has the Bitcoin pairing. It only has the Bitcoin pairing. So to mention this kind of reinforces this idea that they are looking for these lower end tokens. And like I say, there's a slim chance of, fr from my perspective that I think it could be Ambrosius that's gonna be the pump. Um, when I look at the price action that has occurred on this over the last couple of weeks, we bottomed out basically when Bitcoin was coming back in, okay? So I I'll, I'll bring up the graph here. Anyway, I don't think there's anything else here that I need to um, I need to really comment on, except for the fact that you know, based on this information, that the pump they're gonna probably do, right, will be based on Bitcoin, a Bitcoin pairing, and no other pairing. Because what they want, so here's the thing, right? They don't want people sitting there with USDT in their account they post what coin it is, and then people were scrambling to go and switch that to Bitcoin so you don't get that big green dildo initially, right? Because you want that big fat fucking green dildo and everyone's like, oh shit, this token's going to the moon. And then you can just dump all your tokens on people, right? So that's why they say BTC only. And I'm sure if you come back tomorrow, whatever token this group decided to pump, Ambrosius or not, I guarantee you, well, I'm, I'm willing to bet a decent chunk of change that it will only be a Bitcoin pairing. And they're telling you in advance, make sure you've got your Bitcoins ready because there is no other pairing that you can trade on. And we wanna make sure that you're in there as quickly as possible. You're not wasting your time trying to trade your tokens away. Okay, so that's the most important thing that I wanted just to mention from this. Okay, so we know the pairing is gonna be Bitcoin. 
Other groups will also do this as well. Okay, there's more than one of these groups. This is a very big one. There's five or 10. And like I say, Ambrosius is a prime candidate for this. Now let's look at the price action on Ambrosius here. Okay, if we go out to say like the one day graph, you can see we really bottomed out here, right? We really, really bottomed out here and it made it, you know, quite difficult to, to go any low. I mean, this is, this is very, very low. Um, you can't get much worse than this. And as I say, there was a lot of sideways action. So you actually have like a decent chance here just to pick up, you know, two Bitcoins a day, somewhere like that, just in, just in free cash. And notice how the token has just sort of been gradually building up. There have been some dips because you don't want to just buy every single hour on the hour. Right? If you're one of these people that's trying to accumulate, you want to let it come down a little bit. You know, you may even in some situations sell yourself to kind of give it that natural vibe. Um, but what I'm seeing in like the last, you know, 10 days or something is very, very big liquidity coming into the market. I mean, you know, um, just three days ago, we had 71 Bitcoins going through, you know, and the action got pretty pretty juicy so th this is one token that even if it isn't this pump that's coming these whales will start to gradually fill up their pots with these tokens that they can eventually shill right because these guys want to have it ready to go right they want to have 15 bitcoin of ambrosis ready to sell well i actually don't know how much volume they get through but they sure as shit don't want to be sitting there an hour before they pump the token and you know make the price go up 30 percent all right, so they, they gradually accumulate. So that's that's part of why I think that Ambrosius is a good pick. Because even if this pump that's gonna happen tomorrow doesn't happen, it's a completely different token, I know that there is the potential that next week, Ambrosius will be the token of choice. Because these guys feast on these kinds of tokens. This is a prime opportunity. So all I'm doing in this part of the analysis is looking at the pump potential. The potential for this token to be picked okay now i'm not even saying that you need to sell at the pump right i'm not saying you need to sit around and wait and fucking you know set your set your uh, alarm clock for midnight to get in on the action as soon as it happens right you can just buy at like a nice level right and then well again i'm not giving you advice all right i should really phrase it differently i'm happy to buy in and even if i just sell at like 130 right or, or he's somewhere around there right like in the next couple of weeks that's great for me right that's big money all right and as i say i don't think there's much opportunity for this token to dip lower and if it does i'm sure i can pull out before i've lost half and again it's the risk reward factor here that i'm looking at so that's the first metric that i'm looking at with ambrosus okay i've got the local pump and then i've got the long-term pump all right because in six months, I think in six months, at least someone's going to have a crack at saying, all right, let's make Ambrosius a token of choice this week. And you could see this thing blow up 300% in a day. So make sure you got your sell orders ready to go, boys, if you uh, if you do decide to follow me. But again, not financial advice, okay? I'm just telling you what I'm doing. All right, now, the thing is, this, this token's already established on Binance, right? So... In terms of growth potential, it doesn't actually take that much, as I say, to get it going up. A lot of tokens are locked up. It is already on Binance, the, the most liquid market that's available where most people are trading. So this thing, if it gets the ball rolling, it can go very, very big, very, very quickly. Um, what else have I got in my notes here? Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the future of Ambrosius as an actual token outside of the pump opportunity, right? And how you can kind of exploit that people want to build up their bags of this for the big one, all right? So um, if we look at the, uh, this was published today, okay? And this sort of, this was also incorporated into my thinking of why I thought that Ambrosius was a good pick. So the 2021 roadmap, very, very slim, not too much information, but they're publishing more on the 19th of March. Now that's a long time to wait in crypto, okay? But I'm willing to sit on Ambrosius until March, you know, maybe even the start of April, see how things are going and just see what they're coming up with and whether I like the ideas because having a roadmap, having a new plan, showing what you're going to do gets people interested in the projects. Now, there are a few things that jumped out at me at this blog post, okay? 
For this year, we are discussing the announcements of new clients and prototypes. This may or may not include their names, depending on Ambrosius's strategic and competitive advantage, okay? Now, if they don't mention names, they're probably gonna do it eventually anyway, right? Because you can only keep the, the genie in the bottle for so long. But if they don't mention names, at least you know that something is bubbling under the surface and it can even add an air of mystique about the token, right? That people wanna get involved because they think there's gonna be some big player name that comes in and then, you know, the token blows up, you know, cause you only need a few number of contracts in this game for people to get an interest in your token, right? Once you have skin in the game, once you've shown that you have a functional cryptocurrency that, that does what it's supposed to do, you can get the ball rolling and snowball it very, very quickly very, very quickly, okay? Now, as I say, if they do start mentioning names, that's gonna be great, even if the names aren't really necessarily known, but it's great news, right? When you have these strategic partnerships and when you announce them, when you say, hey, we're gonna work with this company, we're gonna work with this pharmaceutical company, we're gonna work on this supply chain logistics, okay? So Ambrose is a supply, supply chain slash pharmaceutical slash, you know, verifications, anti-counterfeiting type thing. They, they, they do all kinds of things in that kind of space. But to be honest, the underlying um, sales pitch for the token for me isn't too interesting, all right? So I'm not gonna sell you on the tech or anything like that. I'm just gonna sell you on the hype because I think that's what basically cryptocurrency is at the moment, all right? That's what cryptocurrency is at the moment. Um, I also noticed through this that they mentioned um, decentralized finance. So if I go and I type in DeFi here, oh, is it this to this? Okay. So the roadmap for 2021 will thus include new tech developments such as integration with decentralized finance and on-chain governance. Now, decentralized finance is blowing up at the moment. It is becoming a very, very big thing. And part of what comes with decentralized finance and what's in that space is a lot of hype, a lot of new, new people coming into it. And as I say, they're already listed on Binance. And one of the great things about decentralized finance is that generally it comes with a lot of staking. You get a lot of people who put their money in and they say, I'm gonna keep my money in here. Really, really wanna keep my money in here. And that really dries up the liquidity. And with that limited liquidity, when you have new players that wanna come into the game, you know, there's not much you can do, right? You have to buy into whatever someone's willing to sell it for. And if people are locked up in master notes and decentralized finance because they're looking to get really good yields or something else that comes with it, a sub token or whatever, it's gonna be dynamite, okay? It's gonna be absolute dynamite, all right? So you've got the DeFi angle, right? You've got the strategic partnerships angle. You've got the fact it's already on Binance. It's ready to go, right? They don't have to pretend that they're not listed on Binance. They don't have to say, you know, we're gonna get, we're gonna get on one of the big exchanges or whatever. They don't need to do anything. They are there, all right? The technology is already there, right? It's already sound as a blockchain. You know, there's, I'm sure they've done audits and it's been, tested and thoroughly, uh, you know, gone through all the attempts to destroy it as much as possible. That's what crypto is like these days. You know, look at Fyro. Got 51% of the attack fucking two weeks ago. All right. So for me, you've got the future of the project. You've got the fact that there's probably limited downside, right? I don't think this token can fall too much away from where it currently is. And don't get me wrong. Like I say, it's a $16 million market cap. It did go down to 8 million, but that's like, that's at the arse end of crypto, like really shitting the bed for, in a bear market for two years. So, you know, realistically, if you're going to put money into crypto, the only way you're going to get that token back down to those crazy low levels, like those eating shit levels, is if the general crypto market is also very bearish again. All right. And as I say, this is a prime candidate for pumpers. And that means that you may see the price like we've been seeing already, right? Like, I'm, I'm, I don't wanna make it this easy, boys, but look at the 30 minute graph on this thing, right? This is very few red. This is very, very few red. Now, I, I, I'm not like an expert on technical analysis. I think a lot of it is bullshit, right? But one thing that I can tell is that Green Candle says that there's a general consensus that there's more on the buy side than there is on the sell side, right? Now, past performance isn't indicative of future performance, right? You shouldn't always trust that kind of thing. But for me, I look at this graph and I'm thinking to myself, well, what's going on here? You know what I mean? We're already up 34% today. Are, are these pump groups, you know, if it's not, 
if it's not the pump group that's going to happen tonight, is it one that's going to happen next week? Is it people who are excited for the roadmap? Is it the DeFi hype? Is it the, you know, whatever? There's, there's there's so many things and there's so many potential upsides for this that I am willing to hold and I don't know where I'm going to sell. I really don't know where I'm going to sell, all right? Because I bought in, I think I averaged in at about 81 sats, okay? So I'm already up 10% on this investment today, right? Like I could go, I, I could theoretically go and sell this for 35 grand or whatever. Like right now, hit that button, sell, that's it. You know, Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. I could get out. For me, I'm going to hold. I'm going to see what's happened. I'll reevaluate after the um, the the pump tonight. There's probably a 15% chance that it's Ambrosius, but again, it's it's the risk asymmetry, right? If there's a 15% chance that it's going to be what I think it's going to be, well, there's then a 90% chance that the token's going to at least double. And to be honest, if it is going to be that token, I think you're going to start to see over the next couple of hours and bros are start ticking up just a little bit more because these groups, as it gets closer and closer to the pump, the time that they have to collect their coins and just get that last little bit of edge over the other ones is drastically reducing. Now, I'm not saying this is going to jump up to 200, right? But, you know, it's at 90 right now. It's already up 33% today. I've just I've just got that feeling. I've just got that feeling. But like I say, it's a 15% moonshot. If that doesn't happen, well, I can say, all right, let's just reevaluate. Let's wait until April. Let's see the roadmap, right? And that there's there's time between that for so many things to happen, for new annou- announcements to come, for a better, better look at what the DeFi is going to look like. Right for maybe some mutterings in general crypto, maybe some rumors to go around, you know. So for me, guys, right now I am holding Ambrosus. Like I say, I don't know where I'm going to sell this. It's going to depend on the time, but I am willing to wait on this token. For me, I am willing to wait. I've got thirty grand in this. If I can double my money, I'd be very, very happy. Um, my stop loss on this one. I haven't said it just yet, so I'm just letting it run at the moment, but maybe even something around 60 sats. Right, it's not technically sats, but 60 of however many, that this might be like 60,000 sats. So maybe I'd let it go down two thirds from where it is, you know, maybe sell out when I've got 24 grand in it or something like that. For me, this represents a brilliant opportunity in crypto. This represents a very, very good opportunity in crypto where there's sufficient risk asymmetry for this thing to pop off. And even if all the little things adding up are very low percentages, right? So we've got 15% of the pump today, right? We've got maybe 5% a pump next week, 5% a pump next week, all right? 15% that the DeFi is actually really good and people want to get involved. 10% that they come out with like a mega announcement for like a really good strategic partnership that they've been like waiting to talk about for six months or whatever. All these little things add up, right? And even if I don't get that and it doesn't triple or quadruple or whatever, well, you know, I'll cut my losses and I'll go and look for something else to do. Anyway, it's been 23 minutes. I just wanted to talk through and kind of even explain to myself why I'm in Ambrosius right now. And guys, if I'm wrong and if this token doesn't go past 100 in six months, come come back to this post in July and type, ha ha, you're a fucking idiot. How's that money gone, dickhead? All right? Because uh, I'll find that funny. All right? I'll find that funny. Um, but yeah, I, I might do more videos on this, uh, sort of general stock market stuff, but just this one I want to talk about Ambrosius because I think there's there's sufficient um, risk-reward asymmetry that, you know, it's a bit of a punt, but I'm a bit of a maverick, and we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. All right? Peace.